So weapon mods underwent a massive change in Cyberpunk 2.0 to the point of being practically unrecognisable now. If you thought the new cyberware system was fun to wrap your head around, you ain't seen nothing yet. But the most important thing to know is that the iconic named weapons we all know and love can no longer be modded outside of scopes, muzzles and silences, leaving us purely with whatever fun abilities they come with and allowing us only to mod the standard weapons now. Though fortunately there is a new series of iconic weapons more powerful than their base counterparts, each of which come with two mod slots that we can customise as we see fit. This is the X Mod 2 series, mostly found in obscure places around Dogtown and serving as some of the most powerful weapons in the game. In this video, I'll be showing you where to find each of them, what kind of builds they best fit into, as well as, most importantly, explaining just how mods work and which pair best with each weapon, all in a general worst to best ranking, though each of them do have their own merits and optimum builds. There's a fair amount to talk about in this one, so let's get to it. Before we dive into the guns though, let me briefly walk you through just how weapon mods work in 2.0. It'll make the rest of the video a lot more clear, trust me. And these details took me a while to piece together. So the game now has 41 different weapon mods, most of which group into smaller divisions of three, plus a few extras. What you're seeing on screen now is each weapon mod within their subsequent groups of three or four. Feel free to take screenshots since they might be good to refer back to. Each weapon then tends to occupy two or three of these groups. Power, tech and smart guns each have a group of mods specific to that weapon type, but there's also three ranged mods available which can be used on any gun regardless of type or style. Then the guns are divided again into four other groups which each sport another set of mods. ARs, SMGs and LMGs share a set, as do pistols and revolvers, then shotguns and finally snipers and precision rifles. So if we take for example the Kappa pistol, we can mod that with anything from ranged, smart or or pistol slash revolver mods. Melee weapons then work in a similar way, with a selection of melee mods that can apply to any melee weapon, but then also subdivisions for blades, blunt weapons and throwable weapons. The only mod which can be applied across everything, both guns and melee, is the PAX mod, making the weapon non-lethal and more damaging outside combat, but a little weaker in an actual fight. There's also the four mods which we can make with the Chimera Core. One for power, one tech, one smart and one melee. These are also the only ones which can be unequipped from a weapon, but bear in mind we can only craft one per playthrough, so choose carefully. I'll be going over most of them through the video. As for acquiring the rest of the mods, that'll be a case of either finding them scattered throughout the world or buying them from weapon vendors. Gun vendors have most of the gun mods, you might just have to wait scum a bit to get the one you want. Then melee mods are available at melee vendors, though these are a little more specific. Coach Fred specifically has blunt weapon mods, whilst Spectre Cheng is the guy for blades. As for throwing weapons, you'll want either the guy in West Wind Estate or the woman in Rocky Ridge. We can upgrade mods in the crafting menu, but each upgrade requires two of the previous tier. And no, we can't craft them from scratch, unfortunately. Recipes will auto unlock after acquiring two of the previous tier, but won't show up before then. There's also a few very powerful ones, which I couldn't actually find in my game, that only come in higher tiers, so I did have to console command these ones in for testing purposes, though I suspect they each likely have specific spawns that I've simply missed or are only discoverable through a fresh playthrough. I'm going to assume that they're very rare, possibly one of a kind items, and if you did find any of these ones on screen now, then please comment where down below. They are so worth having. I might do a designated ranking for weapon mods sometime in the future, though more likely I'll just be discussing them within the relevant context for this and future weapon ranking videos. After all, the key to getting the best out of any one of these mods is in pairing it with the right weapons, which I think it's high time we got onto. Down at the bottom we have the X Mod 2 Kappa. Again, not to say it's bad, I just personally think the others are better. Though this one of course still has an optimum build within which it's pretty good. But first, here's how to find it. And bear in mind it's only going to spawn here after you complete the gig at Spy in the Jungle. Doesn't matter how you resolve that gig, this will always then spawn. Where you'll need to come to is just up here between the Terra Cognita and Luxor Heights fast travel points, to this sort of leg statue. Just behind it is a small building and 
yellow piece of corrugated, which you'll need 10 body to move, or actually just 4 if you equip the legendary griller arms too. Behind it you'll find a bag containing the kappa and some flavour text for Spy in the Jungle, which actually connects it with the Jason Foreman gig. I'll piece that all together when I get to my Dogtown gigs video. Now this is one of the only smart gun Xmod 2s we can get in the game, making it then one of the best guns full stop with which to apply any of the four smart gun specific mods. So that's exactly what I did, switching them out across different fights. The gun itself is a very fast firing, very nimble little pistol, but of course the fully automatic nature, melded with the smart targeting, leaves the actual firepower with a lot to be desired, and it can't really hold its own in a fight, even with an optimised build, without support from other abilities. It just feels weak compared to the rest. However, it being automatic, I'd recommend using it if you're sporting a Militech Paraline Cyberdeck, and like to use a combination of hacking and guns. Granted, that's not nearly as powerful as a pure net running build, but I think it can be more interesting, and fun sometimes. This build then, is essentially a combo of all three intelligence trees, cool for the pistol tree, then air dash, with some cyberware and body boosts if you can afford them too. Cyberware is also a balanced combo of weapon damage, hacking, and healing buffs. You're still fairly delicate, but should be all good if you're tactical now. The reason to pair the kappa with the paraline deck specifically then, is because this one will upload quick hacks faster the more you shoot enemies, and shooting fast and accurately just happen to be the two main things that the kappa can do well, making it the optimal support weapon to our hacks, which are the things dealing the serious damage. Also it does fire explosive rounds, though that's not nearly as cool or noticeable as you'd think, unfortunately. Regarding mods then, we have a few decent options. Headhopper is a really powerful one, locking onto more enemies, improving lock on speed and headshot damage, though this is one of those ones unfortunately which I couldn't find naturally, so hopefully we can sort out just how to get it in the comments. That leaves then Gambatia, massively increasing bullet velocity and armour penetration, but at the expense of missing more shots. I could definitely recommend it for this gun though, since we're firing so many bullets anyway, and could really benefit from the extra speed and damage. For low fire guns like the Ashura though, it's probs best avoided. Then we have Panorama, increasing the size of the targeting reticle, but also increasing the lock on time, just a little bit. And this one can stack to make a huge targeting square. It's actually kind of useful on the kappa against larger groups, though do make sure to weaken the skull enemies specifically with quick hacks too, else it's gonna take forever to bring them down. Finally then I tried Hakatomy, the smart mod that you can make with the Chimera Core, and this was defo one of the most interesting mods I've played around with, offering a small chance to administer quick hacks to enemies, with the hacking question being based on which body part you hit. Again, works great on the kappa for the fact of how many bullets you're firing, and partially even solves the whole damage issue with it. Granted, it's not as effective or reliable as just hacking the enemies yourself, but considering the lack of ram cost, it's defo worth sporting as a bonus addition. In fact, maybe with a more powerful, regular smart gun, say a Sidewinder or Shinjin, this could even work as part of a non-hacking build, allowing you to experience all those quick hacking effects without needing a cyberdeck. Just bear in mind again that crafting this mod locks you out of the three potential others, which are all very good as well. One of the few Xmod 2s obtainable outside of Phantom Liberty is the Lexington, and anyone picking up the expansion from an old save, you'll probably, hopefully, already have it. Remember how Robert Wilson awards us with a quote unquote real fucking nice Lexington for winning his little shooting contest? Yeah, this is now that. And if the artwork looks familiar to you, that's because it's literally the old version of Dying Knight, which itself looks totally different now in 2.0. Sporting, just like most of the Xmod 2s, a bonus 50% headshot damage multiplier and overall improved handling, pitting it just a touch above the regular models, though I did notice it actually sports lower damage in general, and also comes with a Mark 8 clear view scope attached which cannot be removed. Luckily it's a scope I like, but could be an unnecessary annoyance for some of you. Now again, just like the Kappa, a fully auto pistol feels a little weak in straight up combat, even more so considering the lower damage than a regular Lexington, unless of course you're landing constant headshots like 
like a boss, which to be fair, the scope does kind of help with. After using it for a while then, here's a build I found it worked really well with. That being a relatively stealthy one who can still hold their own long enough should things go to shit. Granted, I think there's better guns out there that this build works with, though this ain't a bad choice for a kind of speedrunning, Sandeviston toting, luck gambling, hitman assassin. Though the only thing is it isn't quite quick or powerful enough to take out skull enemies by itself. It does however pair very nicely with each of the three pistol specific mods, which are firstly pinpoint, quite possibly the best one for this build specifically, which reduces spread by up to 36% after landing a string of consecutive headshots, something you'll actually get more with this gun than say a stronger pistol that's going to take them out in one. Zenith also works decently if you're the type to swap around weapons a lot, granting bonus crit chance, swap speed and reduced weapon spread for the first 5 seconds of drawing a weapon. In fact, if you paired this with the shuffler mod which reloads a small percentage of the gun each time you swap, you'd never have to reload again and get some nice bonuses for doing so. Though honestly, since the shuffler mod only reloads like 20% of ammo or something, you'd have to swap so often it would probably be more trouble than it's worth, at least for this fast firing gun. Final pistol mod then is Parallax, which at tier 5 when you're aiming removes all damage reduction at long range and any weapon sway, at the small expense of not regening any stamina either when you aim. This can though be a good replacement for the long shot perk if you're just using pistols, but defo more suited to those who aim quickly and sparingly. In fact I've just realised that if you've unlocked the focus perk from the cool tree as well, then stamina won't actually drain whilst you're aiming, so the fact of it not regening is zero problem, making this mod a lot more powerful. Now we come to the Xmod 2 guillotine from the company Budget Arms, who contextually manufacture low quality products. However, in actuality, these guns really aren't as bad as they're made out to be, often being better than some of the models from bigger names in fact, and this one is no exception, but it might just be a real pain to get for some of you. See, heading to longshore stacks and climbing to the very top of these container homes, you'll come to this shack, locked behind a body check of 20, again reduces to 14 with gorilla arms, but still, kind of locks the weapon away for I'd guess a great many of you. Though the mid to close range nature of the SMG does at least make it the most optimal when used in a health regening body spec build. Also in this shack is an interesting read on the difference between deep dive and fat, the first of which is what allows us to play as Colonel Hansen in the balls to the wall side quest. Back to the guillotine though, and I tested this in a build used alongside several of the other power weapons. That being the chrome compressor, cyberware heavy, fairly tanky marksman built, utilising shotguns and health regen from body, air dash, ARs and SMGs in reflexes, as well as cyberware and equipment in tech. I wasn't fully specced into any of these attributes and that's because I was testing all the weapons within the same save, so needed the intelligence and cool as well. But honestly, specking efficiently into both the perks and cyberware, even on very hard, I actually didn't need any of those top tier abilities, just a lot of arm heals, damage negation, and a steadier aim with a movable force. Also the revulsor cyberware was very useful in tough spots, as was shock and awe. The gun, again, is not the strongest firing weapon in the world, but it really doesn't need to be, and with the right mods it can instead function as a fast firing but also insanely accurate close quarters relentless burst gun, for which you are going to want the mod focus fire, which at tier 5 reduces bullet spread by 40% but also effective range by 30%. Quite a trade off and I know that sounds bad, but the way we'll be using it you won't even notice the drawback. Pair focus fire with immovable force and maybe even slap two of the mods on to remove the bullet spread entirely. Now you literally never have to aim down the sight again, instead just run up to people, position the middle of your screen over them and fire. Take too much damage at once, then just air dash away. You are literally so nimble with this thing and constantly dashing should mitigate most of your damage. And congratulations you are now a hip fire king. Equally, the second focus fire mod won't make too much difference, so you could slot, say, just one, and alongside it a pyro power mod to be a flaming hip fire king. Additionally, if you'd prefer a slightly more distanced, less chaotic approach, you could instead use Ready Steady, which practically removes recoil when slotted with a movable force and transforms the gun into more of a beam rifle, though that's probably a combo better reserved for longer range assault rifles. Only 
mods to possibly consider avoiding with this then is the shuffler switch to reload mod, since the submachine fun perk basically does exactly what shuffler does, but better. First of the two X mod assault rifles next, the Umbra can be found up in Terra Cognita, in this area where there's often airdrops. There's this hidden section behind some corrugated, though bear in mind it didn't open up for me until after I'd completed Lucretia My Reflection. Looks like the previous owner had decided to run away from their life and camp here, but got slightly overconfident with the generator. Dumb way to go, but every cloud and all, and at least now we're the proud new owner of this decently accurate gun with a good rate of fire. Not the most powerful thing in the world, but there are a couple ways to help with that. Again, I'm using the same build as with the guillotine, with one of the most handy items in this case being the visual cortex supports, improving our crit chance at mid-range. You could also grab the cockatrice eyes, but I found I was critting enough without them. Spend the spare cyberware on more defensive measures I would. First up, a great mod to use with this gun is Critichet, increasing our crit chance with ricochet shots specifically by 30% at tier 5. Combined with a muzzle and the other equipment like Ballistic Coprocessor, and pretty much every ricochet will be a crit for at least 50% bonus damage. Basically, yes, broken floor shooting ricochet builds are still a totally viable thing in update 2.0. It's just that everyone was too busy with the non-moddable iconics to either notice or care. Equally, we could slap on the equalizer for up to 20% damage against skull level enemies, making them only marginally tougher now than the tier 2 foes. Not a bad mod, sure, but a little too situational and boring in my opinion. Better Half is a ranged mod that grants a 20% crit chance with the second half of a magazine. A decent choice for lower ammo automatics, though this is one of those ones that I haven't found naturally yet, so comment below if you have. For sure though, my favourite mod to apply to this gun was without a doubt Ready Steady, which used in tandem with Immovable Force utterly removes recoil, even from very long range, as you can see when I hit this wall, never swaying off targets and and basically becoming a literal beam rifle. Sure, it may not do the most damage, but hover it over an enemy for a couple seconds and it'll still get the job done with perfect accuracy. Honestly, removing recoil on guns and using them in this way is one of my favourite ways to play a ranged build in Phantom Liberty now. It literally makes you so accurate. The most powerful and accurate assault rifle out of the box next, we have the Kyubi. High rate of damage, low-ish rate of fire. Little too low for my liking, and no mod exists to fix that, sadly. Though this minor drawback is mostly made up for in both accuracy and range. Very easy to get this one too. Just come to this circular pool of water by the Golden Pacific Fast Travel and dive right down to the bottom. Seems the previous owner was chained to a cinder block, and for whatever reason, tossed to the bottom of this thing. Nasty way to go, but at least their very excellent rifle still works, and hasn't, you know, succumbed to water damage. Now, like I said, its out-of-the-box accuracy means whilst a ready steady mod could definitely be a noticeable help, it might be a little more wasted here, bearing in mind I'm using the same build as I was with the guillotine and umbra that's already utilising immovable force. Now, when it comes to mods for this gun, there's only a small handful which I found to actually be optimal for it. Swiss cheese grants a bonus armor penetration, but at the expense of an increased stamina cost. Personally, I wouldn't recommend this one, mostly because I noticed the stamina drain a lot more than I did the bonus armor penetration. Next, if using the Kyobi from range and behind cover, then Big Mag is not a terrible bet, if you can stomach the longer, more infrequent loading times. Firecracker, the Chimera mod which makes rounds explosive is good, but I'd argue also a little wasted here, since you can achieve an arguably better and definitely more noticeable effects with just a pyro fire mod. Mind you, combining firecracker and pyro is a nice recipe for destruction. Finally then, just like the Umbra, you can totally turn this into a bullseye build with Critichet. Though bear in mind this is a gun that mostly shines in mid to long range, meaning you often won't be firing at the floor directly in front of you. It's still decent enough in close quarters, but there are definitely other guns you could use there which far outshine it.
Okay, so this one isn't technically an X mod 2, though functionally that is still exactly what it is. Yasha was part of the Twitch event to help promote both streamers and Phantom Liberty in tandem, rewarded to anyone who gifted two subscriptions to eligible partners. Not gonna lie, I thought it was quite a good idea. If you ask me, promoting your game by helping out fellow content creators is way better than just slapping a few uniques behind a paywall, calling it DLC, and saying that's that. So to anyone who did take part in that event, you You'll find it in your stash. But to anyone who missed the event, all you have to do is plug this little line of code into console commands and it'll also be all yours. As for console players, I don't know, maybe there's some cross save workaround you can do? Anywho, if not, it's only marginally better than a basic Ashura anyway. Both are just insanely good. Able to one shot all but the strongest enemies, this gun is ideal for anyone wanting to play a hacking sniper build, say. Though personally I left out the hacking in this case just to get a better feel for the gun itself, sporting yet again the chrome compressor and importantly the deep field visual interface for long range crits. Only drawbacks to the sniper itself is that shots will occasionally miss, which is super annoying when you have to reload after each, and the smart targeting range isn't as good as what you could get with a manual sniper. In fact, comparing Yasha to a regular Ashura, the range is actually massively reduced in return for a quicker lock on time and marginally better handling. Not actually sure that's a worthy trade-off, but mm -hmm. I did test all the sniping mods specifically on this gun, but none I'd say are game-changingly good here. Head Toll offers this nice list of bonuses 8 seconds after headshot kills, though not all were useful with my build. Fleet Shot is almost entirely useless, especially if you have the Focus Fire perk from Cool, since the stamina reduction buff then becomes null and void to anyone who actually aims, instead making this one practically a debuff. Thirdly, Stabilizer offers improved weapon handling when crouched, possibly making lock on time a little faster, but no doubt making more of a difference with snipers where you have to, you know, actually aim. In fact, many of the mods you can apply to this gun are, in actual fact, utterly useless. Shuffler doesn't reload by switching, as there's only one bullet, and better half, if you can ever find one of those, would also do nothing, given it's a single shot so there's no second half to the magazine. In fact, the only mods I'd probably recommend installing on the Ashura are two equalizers. Given, like I said, the main enemies not getting one-shotted by this thing are those with the skull icons. And with two legendary equalizers, they'd be taking 40% extra damage, which actually solves the biggest problem with this gun. Okay, things are about to get really fun. The way you can mod melee weapons now can lead to some utterly insane combos, and out of the two X mod melee weapons, I really struggled to put one ahead of the other. But with some thoughts, third place goes to the Cutomatic, found up in Terra Cognita, this time behind this silver arch thing, next to the big scab hideouts. In fact, this one is gruesomely embedded in the head of a guy called John Blum, for what probably serves as a 40k reference, and this was done by the people of Longshore Stacks, because the guy had apparently handed some residents over to the scavengers. Guess he won't be needing the sword anymore though, so… This is easily one of the most gruesome and brutal weapons in the game, sporting incredibly violent unique finishes, which I sadly don't dare show you on this platform. Now, there's a ton of good mods to choose from for this thing, and here's just a few. Cyclone allows you to perform an unlimited number of combo hits for 4 seconds after a sprint attack, though I'd reserve this one for just a katana. I don't think it always worked as intended here, nor with blunt weapons that I tried it. The Severance Chimera mod, on the other hand, is totally brilliant, with each hit to the head or limbs on an enemy below 50% health, granting a 20% chance to instantly kill. Again, statistically more viable on a faster swinging katana, but defo still noted and appreciated here. Plus, it can be interchangeably switched, if you did choose it. The two blade specific mods, which we can buy from Spectre Cheng in Japantown then, actually pair pretty decently together. Together. Bleed Out offers 100% crit chance to the damage over time effect from bleeding, with most blades granting a 20% chance to bleed on each hit. Essentially, this means most enemies will bleed, and when they do, they're gonna bleed critically. Plus, we only need to slot one of this mod to get the maximum effect. Pair this with Hemicide then, and we'll get a bonus 3 second duration to that bleed effect, though granted at the expense of 10% base damage, which is a bit of a mood killer. Finally though, and this 
this again, I haven't found naturally yet, so if we can establish where it is, then that would be great. But slice them up is utter insanity. Basically, for five seconds after each kill, enemies will be 20% more susceptible to finishers. Now, whilst performing a finisher, you are immune to damage. Somehow, this 20% susceptibility, though, seems to me to be a lot more, because I was getting the option for finishers pretty much constantly, literally surviving in this chaotic mess without berserk on the hardest difficulty. Granted, max tax still screwed me up when they finally arrived, but still, it was insane, and I'd highly recommend if anyone has found this mod, then absolutely equip it on the Cutomatic. Much as I love the Cutomatic, I think I actually preferred by a hair's breadth the baseball bat, which despite having studs and not wires, still feels like a love letter to Negan fans everywhere. It can be found just up on this walkway, across from the Heavy Hearts Club, amidst this group of whacked out skezos. Or skezed out wackos, I don't know. I think blunt weapon builds are definitely one of my favourite in 2.0 for a few reasons. Firstly, slamming the ground with superhero landing to obliterate all those around you is just as fun as it sounds, and can be made even better by applying the airstrike mod, increasing crit chance by 25% and crit damage by a whole 70% at tier 5, plus a 70% greater knockdown chance. That's not just for the quake landings by the way, but any aerial leap attacks too. Silencio is another fairly decent one for this, granting 100% crit chance and 50% crit damage when using undetected crouched attacks. Wasn't really the build I was going for here, but with katanas or knives and tomahawks same, in a stealth build, that's essentially double damage when striking from stealth with just that mod alone. The other three great mods for the bat then are blunt weapon specific, and again can be bought from Coach Fred, save for Barbarian, which again, as of yet, I haven't discovered. That one though offers 40% extra damage to any stunned, staggered, or knocked down enemies. Basically do the knockdown move where you hold block and then run into people, and then it's more often than not just going to be one swing per foe for a full on lights out. As for the two you can actually buy though, Blood Bruiser works kind of similar to Bleed Out, except instead applying lethality to the weapon and the chance to inflict bleeding equal to 90% of the weapon's stun chance. That'll be 18% with this bat. And yes, the bleeding effect I did notice to be very regular and much appreciated in bigger fights. Finally, KO is a bit of a mixed bag, granting extra damage and knockdown chance, albeit at the expense of using more stamina and attacking more slowly. Though you can kind of make up for those debuffs with certain bits of cyberware, such as the Adrenaline Booster and Micro Rotors. Again, I ran a Chrome Compressor build both for this and the Chainsword rather than a Berserk, because honestly, by combining the right cyberware, perks and mods, you can become almost invincible without needing Berserk. Number 1 best Xmod 2 gun in the game for me then is easily the Fazar. Found up in this large ruined building just outside Longshore Stacks, you'll want to come behind these green containers between 12 and 5am. If you come at the wrong time, you'll have to return to the ground before you wait, else the door isn't going to open. Inside is a cosy looking party which definitely sounded a lot better from the outside. And at the end of the room we can find the shotgun, as well as this hint written on the ground which is actually an instruction to unlock the secret room on floor 3 of the Arasaka Tower 3D arcade game, which of course ties in with all the new stuff regarding the FF06B5 mystery that I have a three part series on. It's honestly crazy how obscure some of the references to this whole thing are and where they crop up. But anyway, back to the shotgun. This thing is a fully automatic, insanely powerful weapon which absolutely dominates close range gunplay. It's a little weaker than a regular Fazar, but has supremely better handling, and fires 6 projectiles instead of 5, which may actually nullify the lower damage thing anyway. Only minor gripe I have with it is actually its tendency to run out of ammo in a larger fight, even when starting with the maximum possible amount. Though that shouldn't be too much of a problem, provided you remember to keep crafting more every time combat ends, and maybe take a backup weapon that uses a different ammo type. Other than that, it just feels stupidly powerful, whatever your build is. I used it once when the Kappa had run out of ammo, despite being in a totally 
unoptimized build at that point, yet it still absolutely dominated. The build I did use for this gun, by the way, was the same as I used with the Kyubi, Umbra, and Guillotine, just obviously with shotgun perks too. Regarding mods then, Pyro was again a great bet, that's probably one of the most noticeable and fun mods you can get in general, but I also took this chance to check out the three shotgun mods, for which we firstly have Condenser, essentially making hip fire tighter at the expense of damage. More befitting, I'd say, to a chaotic run and gun build than the sort of systematic annihilator way that I played. Plus, this gun especially already has pretty good spread anyway. Better than that though is Vivisector, increasing your dismemberment chance to 100% at legendary when killing an enemy, then dealing an extra 25% torso damage to all remaining foes for 5 seconds thereafter, by which time you've probably taken out another foe and reset the effect and so on and so forth. Perfect for the systematic annihilator that I just mentioned, though the last of the three is even more broken still. Neil with an exclamation mark feels like a reference to that time that Loki shouted it in Avengers, and if anyone can find this mod naturally somewhere in the world, then please please tell me. I've discovered a lot of broken builds today, but this one by far is the winner. On paper, it grants a 25% chance to dismember and instantly kill when shooting an enemy in the leg. In practice, this feels more like a 100% chance. Literally, leg shots were serving as instant kills for every single enemy, aside from bosses, mechs, and those guys with the lasers. The only explanation I can think of for this chance being much higher than it should is that it actually means 25% per projectile, not per shot. And since the X mod Fazar fires six tightly wound ones, that then becomes like an 82% chance that one of them, at least, will get the dismemberment effect. Hell, maybe the reason I haven't actually found it in the game yet is because the devs decided it was too broken and left it out for now. Hopefully, by leveraging my entire community and everyone who watches this video, we can come up with a definitive answer to this. So please, comment below if you found any of the missing weapon mods I've mentioned today, as well as any other overpowered weapon mod combos that you know of which I haven't covered in this video. Equally, if there are any more X Mod 2s discovered after this, I'd love to hear about them as well, to follow this up with a part 2. Aside from that, I'll soon be making a start on the more regular weapon rankings for 2.0 and Phantom Liberty, for which I'll be breaking down all of the new and the old iconics, many of which have changed, as well as the base guns and their best mods. As always, massive thanks to the patrons for supporting the channel, videos like this especially take me a ton of time and research to put together, and your support means I can worry less about upholding scheduling or sponsorships. Finally, thank you for watching. I hope you found this one useful, I'm Sam Bram, and I'll see you soon in another video.